Hi, my name is Aaron Lindstow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. I am in the middle of I don't know Idaho near a tiny settlement called Mesa and <laughs> we are at a location that was a huge apple orchard at one time. It was thought to be the largest apple orchard under control by one organization. This apple orchard was actually pretty special. I mean, I'm driving along, you see these signs along the highway, and you think, oh, what's that big a deal about? So I busted out, I actually have a little bit of cell phone connectivity, and we're near a place called Mesa. Uh, it used to be a town and had its own uh, post office, and it still has its own zip code, but the post office is long gone, so I'm not exactly sure how people get their shipments or mail or anything, maybe they have to drive to a little town called Cambridge and get their stuff. But what the fascinating thing is here is that in the early 1900s, people thought, hey, this looks like a great area for an apple orchard. Now, I'm gonna spin the camera around just to show you kinda what this place looks like. I'll get out of there so I can focus. And we'll spin the camera around. I mean, obviously that's somebody's property, but do you see anything here that uh, makes it look like this would be a good place for an apple orchard? Nope. <laughs> so that's one of the things about I love about my fellow Americans. We come up with these crazy ideas like, hey, we're going to get into a really dry location in Idaho, and this is a spectacular location for an orchard. Now, see, it doesn't have to do with the physics, the logic, the environment, the climate, or whatever. It has to do with somebody having a crazy idea, and that's somebody convincing somebody else with money to finance the whole operation. So apparently that's what happened. I'm reading my notes here because I haven't learned too much about this, but this is great. So it was, uh, let's see, I'm turn the camera here. It was about 1908. You'll have to excuse the traffic because I'm on the side of the highway, obviously. But in about 1908, somebody came up with the idea that this would be a great spot to put an apple orchard. Again, we've already talked about this. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is the area is like crazy dry. There's a river north of here about seven miles. But for some reason, everybody thought, hey, here's a good place. Probably because people had already created a little bit of settlement here, or a, a small settlement. So why go seven miles out to, ooh, there, there are bulls out there. Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> why go seven miles out to the river to put the apple orchard when we can be seven miles away? So these guys, let's see, uh, it's called the Middle Fork of the Weezer River. Sorry, I'm reading from my phone here. But I just love this story. So this uh, Mesa Orchards Company, whoo, that's loud. Well, you already read the sign here, so let's walk on up while I talk to you. But the, the Mesa Orchards Company decided to order, how many trees they order? 80,000 trees. Check that out. That's nuts. We're trying to get away from the traffic here, so you have to bear with me. Oh, here we go. A little bit farther from the traffic. You get a better view of what this entire area is like. So somewhere north of here, which is, I think, that way. It's hard to tell without the sun and my compass is in the truck. But the, uh, in the camera sideways, hey, we're working in the field here. So just, just roll with me here, okay? Uh, this is the Mesa Apple Orchard Company ordered 80,000 80, trees. I mean, it was, it was pretty crazy. And so they had those shipped from the east. Ooh, this big semi truck's gonna squash my truck. Oh, it's something on the side of the road. And they ordered 80,000 trees in 1909. And they hired 100 men to build a sawmill because if you don't have water, well, how, how are you going to keep those trees alive? Well, irrigation. So what you do is you head seven miles roughly, I think it's that way. Wait, here, here you go. Seven miles that way. And you're going to hire 100 guys and build a sawmill and create this flume to bring water from seven miles away all the way to here. So what's a flume? A flume is a little culvert or a rain gutter that's much bigger than this. And then they built this huge thing. It's called the flume. It's made out of wood planks. And water gets into that flume, this gutter, and it's channeled seven miles away to come here. I'm, I'm looking at these notes here. And 
So of course, like, oh, this is really great. We've got water. And very quickly, the apple orchard started to die. These trees started to die because they realized they just didn't have enough water. Bah! Oh, we have this huge apple orchard. We didn't all have enough water. Wait, let me try that again. Pow! So for two years after this was constructed, the, this company had to truck water from the river all the way to the orchard. Imagine that. I mean, nowadays you got semi trucks, get this highway ripping by the US 95 and no problem. People, this is 1909. There weren't semi trucks. There wasn't a high speed highway. You couldn't go, th this highway is 65 miles an hour. Not going to happen. So they had to get a truck which back then meant, uh, it said hauled, oh, wagon, wagon, yeah. So a truck back in 1909 to 1911 was a wagon. How much water would you have to haul to irrigate 80,000 trees? It doesn't say in here, but a lot. So then, okay, hey, we got these orchards going, this is all great. Well, how do you get the apples to this, like, uh, the, what is it, the, the railway? Another, I don't know if, uh, how far away, three and a half miles away. Oh, well, you're not gonna pick an apple and walk it there, or you're not gonna put a bunch of apples in a bag, because even then, way back when, labor was cheap, it wasn't that cheap. So instead, <laughs> the Apple Orchard Company had to build this tramway for a cost of $45,000 at the time, which would probably be a million, couple million bucks. Well, nowadays, you know, uh, what's that, uh, prevailing wage, it probably costs like $10 million, who knows, to get a, a railroad all the way across these hills. And then, so that started operating till 1934, where, okay, we, we finally have water here, and we got the flume fixed, we got the irrigation thing, and now we're gonna put water, or water, apples in to this train, and then we're gonna haul it out to the railway, and we're gonna start sending stuff. Now, this thing's 1,400 acres, I mean, I don't know exactly how big 1,400 acres, but probably like way over there, way over there, because I think it's um, 2,500 uh, 2500 acres is four square miles. So probably two, two and a half square miles. I mean, a mile by a mile, that's huge. Now, is that huge by, t oh yeah, the rig, rig disappeared. I don't have to yell so loud. Oh. So, it, huge definitely by those standards. So the story goes on. <laughs> and that, that tramway, tiny train, ceased operation in 1934. So they quit the train and the highway must have started coming in. Like, all right, we still have to get the apples to the train. So they must have either, it doesn't actually say in this Adams County information, of course. But they, they figured out another way to get those apples to the orchard because apparently the tramway is too expensive. So, 500 workers had to harvest these apples between uh, 1933 and 1936. So we had this crazy idea to put an apple orchard in a dry location in the middle of Idaho, and then we'll build this up. Now, now the sign says they operated till 1960 somehow. Uh, blah, blah, okay, but then in 1936, they were forced to sell off a lot of the orchard to, because of huge debts. Imagine that, train that is expensive, flume that didn't work, carting water. <laughs> yeah. So th this is one of those experiences where I learn it's all about the sales pitch. So by 1947, after World War II, they were harvesting up to 500,000 boxes, like a box, you know, they had to carry that thing around. I don't know what, what an apple box weighs, but my dad knows. He worked in produce for 40 years. It's probably like 50 plus pounds. And they, they could cart a half million pound or boxes of apples, which how many, that would be like 2.5 million pounds of apples. Think about that one. How many apples do you eat? And the, the problem is in 1949, there were 63 days of below zero weather here. Now, I live in Jackson Hole right now. And sometimes we'll have that, and in 1978-79, uh, it was minus 63. But th that's insane, and I know it was super cold, but apparently in 1949, uh, 49, 
1949, you got 63 days of sub-zero weather. So people that complain about the cold, like unless you live in Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, North Dakota, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, you, you probably don't know what cold is. If you're from Florida, Texas, Louisiana, Arizona, you think, oh, snow's cold, no! The high never got above zero. <laughs> These poor guys, like dry location debts up to their eyeballs. And eventually, I'm reading my last of my info here, that eventually they, they decided, you know what, this isn't gonna work. Apparently the highway sign that you of course can't see where the highway sign is. There's my truck. The other side of the highway sign says some of the orchard lasted until 1960 or so, but most of the trees by, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, you know, after the 40s through the 50s, things started started tanking here, and by, by 60 it was over. So really now there's some barbed wire fence. Uh, hopefully these people don't get a shotgun out at me or something, but <laughs> or chase their cows and steers and bulls after me. But really, I mean, this is just a little highway, byway community that you blow through in Idaho. There's just not a lot here. I'm sure some nice folks, some hay uh, on the way, but th that's about it. So from a huge, huge orchard of 80,000 plus trees, generating a half million boxes of apples, translating to over 2.5 million boxes, yeah, 2.5 million apples, uh, to like, boom, really back to grassland. I mean, you can see this area isn't farmed. I, I, don't, I don't really know what people do out here. There, there's cows. I see some cows. Let's check out the cows. Can you see the cows over there? Might have to tilt the camera down. Yeah, way out there. There's some cows. Yep, there's some cows right there. And that's about it. So that's uh, one of the nice, neat things about driving along these little byways in the middle of Idaho and Montana and Wyoming and all sorts of crazy places is that you come along, you blow past these signs, but you really think, just stop for a moment, come out here and check this out. It's like crazy. <laughs> so whoever started this thing in 1908, 1909, they figured out, man, I can sell somebody on something awesome. <laughs> awesome. Salespeople, they know what they're doing. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed this little world beyond experience in the middle of Idaho. My name is Aaron Linsdow. Please enjoy the world beyond your doorstep and the world beyond your city limits. Thank you very much. Please like and comment on my video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.